Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. While the government's electric vehicle drive seems to have hit a speed bump, even as the industry grappled with the policy uncertainty and confusion, state-run EESL has decided to scrap the second tender for the procurement of 10,000 electric cars. This cancellation comes in the backdrop of EESL's first tender for EVs running into trouble. Reports suggest EESL is going slow on procuring cars from Tata Motors and Mahindra as part of its first order. This allegedly due to concerns of underperformance. But Tata Motors in a statement has clarified that its electric vehicle, the Tigo, is fully compliant with the eligibility criteria. So far, about 150 electric cars have been put on the road. The target under phase one of the first tender was about 500. Thus, this present a sobering picture of the gaps between India's EV dreams and reality. To discuss these developments and the road ahead, I have with me the managing director of EESL, Saurabh Kumar. Mr. Kumar, appreciate you joining me here on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by getting you to clarify for us, what is the reason that EESL has decided to scrap the second tender for procuring 10,000 additional electric vehicles. Reports seem to suggest that this has to do with the change in charging code, which has not been clarified yet by the Department of Science and Technology. Other reports seem to suggest that perhaps you've decided to go slow on concerns related to underperformance of the current vehicles. Where does the truth lie? Thanks uh, for having me here. I mean, number one, let me, let me say, as you rightly mentioned in your first uh, opinion, that the reason why we have held back the, the second tender is that the charging specifications are undergoing a change. Mm. We saw a draft note um, um, specification come out, which is a very open specification and allows all kinds of charging to be, to, to be under one roof. Mm. It was put out for public comments. The public comments have come. As I understand now, they are getting into the final stages of approval. Okay. So we thought it's appropriate mm. to wait till these specifications are notified and, and then put out the tender because if, if, if a higher specification uh, charging infrastructure is around, mm. then we can have longer range of cars. Okay. Now, it has, this has nothing to do, let me clarify, on, first of all, there is no problem technically with either the Tata Motors or with Mahindra. Okay. Almost 150 cars are running in Delhi, as mm. you rightly mentioned. 450 cars are getting uh, in various stages of registration. Every month, August onwards, 500 cars will go to, to Andhra Pradesh. Mm. So, and almost six months there have been people, senior uh, government officials who have been using this car. Mm. We have not been uh, told of any You've got no complaints? No, at all. Not at all. Okay, I, I, I'll get into the specifications of uh, uh, the issues that have been raised. You're saying you've got no complaints, but the issues that have been raised, at least as per media reports, to do with Tata Motors and the uh, Mahindra Verito in just a second. But let me go back to the scrapping yeah. of the tender. Now, you said that the Department of Science and Technology is in the process of putting together the new charging code. Right. Uh, why is it different from the code that the first uh, uh, tender had put in place, which was the Bharat's charging code? Why do we need a different code for the second tender? How much does this have to do with the fact that you're opening up room or space in this tender for higher or luxury sedans, for instance? Well, it's not just about luxury sedans or anything. I mean, if you look at uh, charging specifications worldwide, they go, go from level 1 to level 5, mm. which are basically measured from the time taken to charge fully a car. The ones that were specified earlier, which are level one chargers, mm. based on which we have bought the cars, they can charge a car, which is about 20, 17 to 20 kilowatt hour battery, yeah. in about 90 minutes. Okay. Now, if you're looking at a full-blown mobility, mm. we need to replicate what happens on a petrol station. Mm. Level five charging stations that are available in the world can charge in less than five minutes. Mm. So it's important to have these state-of-the-art charging specifications mm. so that you can get better quality of cars, mm. also to, to, uh, to attract people to, to uh, invest in uh, electric cars. So what is the dilemma? Going the Japanese route or going the European route? Are those the two norms that the DST as well as the ESL finds itself sort of struggling to, to arrive at a, at a middle ground? Uh, let me first uh, say that ESL is not part of this. Uh, the DST uh, is, yes. But I'm sure that they've sought your feedback uh, as a key stakeholder. No. Anyway, so the, the draft... They haven't. No, they have. The draft that came out, which we have supported, mm. includes both the CCM, CCS and the CHADMO specification. Yeah. So it's an open specification. Any, anyone which can provide... Level either one of the two. Either of the two is possible. Okay. Under a roof, you can have both 
as well so as. So then, why the delay? No, it's a it's a it's a government process. You have to necessarily put this out for public comments for at least two months. Mm. That's a part of the. And now, once you have the public uh, the comments in place, someone needs to take a look at that, see what is possible to be included or not included. Mm. Then it goes through a process of legal vetting within the mm. government. I think that is what is happening. I don't think there's so any delay. So how much longer will the wait be? I will, I will be uh, the wrong person to ask this because simply speaking, that but part is... But is the time is period for public consultation over? Over. It has, it has how gone. How long has that been over I for? I think about three or four weeks. Okay, so three or four weeks, the period for public consultation yes. is over. So now the legal vetting Absolutely. will Absolutely. I mean, will whatever it is, you'll have to... I, I, I am not the right person really to, uh, to tell you where the, uh, the process uh, currently so is. So do you feel confident that you will be able to put the second tender in the market Absolutely. in this calendar year? Absolutely. You do Absolutely. feel confident about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Okay. Let me now get into the specific issues to do with the first tender, and that uh, is where you decided to procure uh, the Tigor from Tata Motors and the Verito from m and As you pointed out, 150 vehicles on the road between Delhi right. and Andhra Pradesh, I was yes. given to understand yes. as well. Uh, in phase one, the expectation was 500. You're saying that they're in various stages of being put on the road. Uh, how long will it take for all these 500 to be on the uh, road? It will be actually 600 cars okay. and that should happen by the end of August. Registration is, uh, is going on at various locations. It's, mm. it's not just uh, Delhi and Andhra. Mm. We also have re registration pro process going on in Maharashtra, in Madhya Pradesh and also uh, most recently we have got uh, from Jharkhand. Okay. So uh, by 31st August all these 600 cars will be up and running at various places. Okay. Do you feel confident of being able to meet that March 2019 Absolutely. deadline? to ensure that all these cars as part of the first yes. tender, the 10,000 will be Absolutely. on the road? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the companies are, are in line with the, the schedule as far as Absolutely. production is concerned? Absolutely. Absolutely. No problems on that no, front? No, not at all. Okay. Then let me ask you about the concerns that are being raised specifically on the specifications. That uh, the reason why personal mobility of electric vehicles hasn't really taken off is because these cars that are currently available on the road don't offer anything compelling when compared to the IC engine, uh, which, you know, e e even though it might be more polluting in comparison, has a lot more to offer for the price. That is proving to be a big hurdle from a customer's perspective. Uh, How do you cross that? Well, I, I don't entirely agree with this. Mm. There is an economic compelling reason. The cost of operating the EVs today is about one third of the of cost of operating a diesel or a petrol car. Sure. So there is a, there is a, a rationale. The mm. reason why it is not picking up is there is no public charging infrastructure. Mm. And as I understand the FAME 2 uh, uh, the policy which is currently at the final stages of mm. approval as I, as I know, lays a lot of emphasis on putting together public charging infrastructure. Mm. In fact, they have in, uh, recommended, as I understand, that in every 1 million plus cities, for every three to five kilometers, you will have a public charging station. Who is going to set up this infrastructure? This, because this that whole, continues yeah. to be a question this, mark this as is, well. This is going to be the, uh, the overall responsibility of the Ministry of Power. The Ministry of Power will set this yes. up. Uh, that is absolutely yes. clear. In, in consultation with the state governments and urban local bodies. Okay, so course. you're not you're you're not expecting private sector investment to no, come no, in not? as far as the charging infrastructure is concerned. I mean, you hope that they will, no, no, but no. but you let, yeah, let but you clarify. believe that the government is going no, to no, no, going to sh uh, share a uh, lion's share of the responsibility. No, no, the government will facilitate. Fame two will provide up to 50% of capital subsidy. Mm. Of course, it will be open to public uh, and private sector uh, entities to, to lay, lay, lay down the infrastructure. Mm. While the Ministry of Heavy Industries is batting for a 50% subsidy, the view within the Finance Ministry seems to be very different. The view within the Finance Ministry is that there needs to be more rationalization as far as the subsidy component is concerned. And that is where the concern stems that, you know, you've got all of this aspiration of how much you want to put on the road by way of electric mobility, but then there continues to be confusion at the policy level, especially when it comes to fiscal incentives, uh, not just on the vehicles themselves, but also on the charging infrastructure. Well, uh, Shireen, unfortunately, I'm not part of that consultation process, mm. but whatever last I have been told and, and, and known is that power ministry has very strongly pitched in for 50% capital subsidy for public charging infrastructure. Mm. In, in these 1 million plus cities, which I mentioned 3 to 5 kilometers, there should be a public charging in, in infrastructure. Where it should be, and that's where the consultations with the state governments and mm. urban local bodies is mm. important. Also, it also is, has talked about a few highways where every 25 kilometers there should be a public charging infrastructure. Mm. So once this is set up, the 
rationale and and for a, for a private mobility will increase dramatically hmm. but if if there were not to be that 50% capital subsidy that uh, that you believe uh, the power ministry is pitching for and you hope will go through will it then make this viable at all especially when it comes to private investment it, it will probably not be very viable for the private sector to invest initially because so the government will be forced to do it uh, I mean, this is this is a mission of the government, and therefore the government has taken upon itself to take up this. Our our rollout plan, and which we are currently doing, is also mm. part of that larger mm. plan. But definitely, there will be some time before the the private mobility will pick up. Mm. And up until then, these investments may not be the most remunerative. Uh, both for the public and the private sector mm. and therefore there is a need for capital subsidy okay you know there is this other uh, sort of idea that's being uh, mooted within the finance ministry and that is uh, higher taxes on the ic engine vehicles uh, in order to incentivize the use of electric mobility do you believe that that's a good idea well if you if you ask me this is happening right now mm. i mean hybrids uh, uh, have attracted 28% gst uh, evs attracted 12% gst and this is something which has been used particularly in the US to incentivize electric mobility mm. where a higher tax is levied on... Uh, but till you actually create the ecosystem, till you have the infrastructure in place, is it really fair to penalize the consumer? No, as I said, these things will go incrementally. Mm. It is not that... Uh, I mean, I, again, I, I, I can only give my personal opinion on this. I will agree with you that it should not be from day one. Mm. And that is why a capital subsidy-based model is far far better to begin with mm. as you rightly say as the number of players in the market increase as awareness about evs increase the government will probably look at at alternatives to mm. fund fund or or make incentivize evs what is happening on the public uh, transportation side especially when it comes to electric vehicles uh, delhi uh, the government had just yesterday in fact the cabinet has cleared the plan to put on the road a thousand electric buses of course it will go through a process of tendering as well which they hope to get done this calendar year what is your own sense of the electric plan when it comes to public transportation how feasible how realistic is it looking today uh, I think that is one place which needs really a big push because if you look at an EV, 60 to 70 percent of the cost of an EV is largely batteries. Now, if you are able to swap batteries, mm. which is possible in, yeah. a, in a public transportation mm. uh, system, mm. then your cost of procurement goes down very, very much. Then there are alternate models, something that Bangalore has very recently uh, done, where you have bought uh, EV, uh, 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 buses on a service model. Mm and provided them with the with the charging infrastructure mm. so i think that really uh, has a has an enormous scope as we move forward mm. and uh, yes as you rightly say it's a first large step from the delhi government of but Kansas. again we will then have to wait for the charging infrastructure no, it to is be not, put in that place is, no? no absolutely not because here the buses start from the depot you yeah. can have a charging or a swapping infrastructure there there's sure. enough space there are bus stops where you can again have quick charges so you really don't need to to wait for the public charging infrastructure mm. to kick start public mobility okay but even that itself will take time even though delhi has identified the depots etc but even setting up the infrastructure will take its time will it not i mean they're hoping to put these buses on the road sometime next year 2019 is the aspiration do you believe that that uh, is a realistic it, timeline uh, look as far as availability of buses is concerned, and if you're specifically talking of Delhi, I don't see a problem in, in get, uh, them getting 1,000 uh, vehicles in a year's time. We have set up almost 500 charging points. It does not take much time to, uh, okay. to set up charging infrastructure. Hmm. So I really don't uh, see a challenge in, in, in so far as laying out the public. That's much simpler, hmm. if you ask me, than hmm. uh, uh, personal mobility. Okay. Uh, you know, the other argument is that perhaps before we actually try and push car usage electric car usage we should also experiment with two-wheeler and three-wheeler uh, usage we're talking about public transportation we talked about buses but what about the idea of incentivizing two-wheelers to go electric as well as three-wheelers to go electric i completely agree with you if you look at numbers last year almost a million vehicles were sold worldwide of which half a million was in was in china and almost 70 to 80 percent were two-wheelers so in the fame two subsidy that is being that is being finalized there is um, uh, subsidy for both all kinds of vehicle. It mm. does not preclude any vehicle, sure. including the two wheelers. Two and three wheelers also uh, lend themselves for swapping very easily, mm. making making the the economic case. Uh, much much uh, attractive as mm. compared to a personal car mm. let me before we uh, wrap up uh, ask you again about 
uh, about the fact that so far you're saying that there have been no concerns that have been expressed by any of the 150 who are driving not to driving mind. the not electric to vehicles at this point in time. You're, you're driving two of them of yourself. Course, of course. And <laughs> happy with both. Absolutely very happy. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Mr. Kumar. Thank Thanks you. very much Thank for joining you. us here on CNBC TV 18 to discuss India's electric vehicle plan.